Hello and welcome to the Take a Poll podcast episode 33, which is coming to you from Fairy House on the 24th of February, which plays host to the Bobby Joe Chase, a very notable Grand National Trial. Andy Cummins hosting again and, as usual, joined by Declan Carroll. Declan, how are you? How are you doing, Andy? Is it unusual to have um, a trial for the handicap as a conditions race? <sighs> That's a very good question. That's a really good question. Um, I suppose you can kind of get it for the Melbourne Cup as well, can't you? Um, on the flat. Yeah. Uh, but you yeah. don't really... And the Ebor, like you, you you get the handbrake on in group races now. Well, is that, the, is that is handicap and horses rather than being actual trials? I don't think the Bobby Joe is actually a trial, but it is, isn't it? May as well be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a great it, race. It, I love it. I, I think it's 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 the first time they can let the handbrake off. Yeah. Because the, the, the weights are out. And it yeah. allows you to go into the race, you know, on an upward curve, say. Once you're going to entry, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if okay, you're going yeah. back to Fairy House, you're, you're shooting yourself in the foot, probably. Um, yeah, no, some fantastic winners of the race, though. Last year, uh, Kenboy beaten Vanillier. It was Kenboy's last appearance on the track, wasn't it? Um, Is that last year, was it? I think that was last year. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, so he beat Vanillier. So it would have had to have been. Um, you feel like he's been retired longer, though, wouldn't you? You do, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said that now. Yeah, well, I, I hope I'm really I'm right. Check because I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, can yeah, there you check. go. You don't believe me. You, you had me worried there. <laughs> My notes were <laughs> wrong. Um, yeah, no, grey horse Kenboy was, and Vadillier, um, very unlucky, just touched off by a block basically at entry. Um, but he'll have another chance this year, and he's been let in off ten stone eight deck, um, which I think is four pounds higher than last year, and a nine pound swing or Cork Rambler, so. I'd say Gavin Cromwell is doing a jig down in County Cork. He must be absolutely delighted with that because like when you compare it to horses like any second out who got absolutely obliterated for finishing a ten length third, um you know, it's very it's generous. That's that's the word I'd use. And he'd you'd have to be he'd have to be favourite, wouldn't he? You would have thought. I'd imagine he's he's going to be. He's, yeah. yeah, he probably will. Mm. Who is Andy Post's favourite? Is Him it? and Cora, it's the same two again. Right, I'm pretty sure right up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, what sort of a price is I am, Maximus? Is he going to run? Like well, he's going to run here, so we're going to talk about him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Deck, you just wanted to touch on Thurless um, from today. We're recording on Thursday night, obviously. Um, and obviously the the great result in the in the mayor's race for uh, our listener, Adam Gennard. So take it away. Yeah, well, we, we took her on, but um, they were rewar- rewarded with coming over and... Um, taking home some prize when he saw fair play to them mm. um a brave decision we'd like to see more of it but you know i thought she got a great ride from kira gettings yeah and uh, he spoke very very well after the race too and i will just d- delighted for adam and and the rest of the the syndicate fair play um it, it was great to see and i'd say they got a brilliant reception and in, in taurus like we, we like to see it we like to see riders coming over it does make things more interesting and um, I know that wasn't a handicap, but the handicapper does tend to give them a chance when they do. Yeah. Uh, he, he can be quite fair. But um, look, that, that was brilliant to see. Um, not an easy place to come to to get black type in a mare's only no. race, you mm. know. But um, they were rewarded and you know, just just absolutely delighted for Adam. Fair play to them. Yeah. That was Marsh Wren winning the 223 at Thurless today, the Colreevy mare's novice chase. I wonder if they'll consider fairy house now for her um if the ground is testing enough because obviously she does enjoy that, um, that was anyway. we 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 did talk about when mm. it was over in leperstown we said just give her an entry yeah see what happens yeah, yeah. absolutely what, what, she's being entitled to now i'm not sure she'd get i don't think she'd get in Um there is the consolation race though it's still worth a, a, a pretty penny um, yeah, she needs mm. she needs soft ground but with the weather we've been having you know the weather it 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 was soft in Taurus today. That's how wet it's been. Um, since <laughs> sure Christmas. got called off the other week over Christmas. It's it's been it's been yeah it was called off yeah. yeah. So, um, Pulchest Town used the inside for the start and the finish of every race it was a hurdle only card, and uh, I've never seen that before. They will often start on the inside and finish in the straight to uh, say brown but. It was unusual. Um, they were miles away from you. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was very unusual to see. But uh, obviously, they need to look after the ground, and 
you know, the festival coming in April. So, um, it, it, look, it's an absolutely brilliant race course. They've so much space. Yeah. I used to say uh, they had 10 tracks in that race course, but I seen yeah, them on, on Wednesday. <laughs> Very good. Um, and also just a, a quick uh, review of um, James Fahey's ja- Dancing Jeremy. He's nearly he's nearly odds on to be a, an early inductee into the Tap Hall of Fame. I know we didn't tip him up, we, we went to take him on again, but God, he's just a lovable horse, isn't he? If, if he was yeah. actually, a, if he was 10 or 15 or 20 pounds better, I think the public would like him because it's a small trainer, very consistent, runs his heart out. Bold running it's gray. gray. Yeah, yeah, he's just, oh, he's just great, isn't he? He's, he's yeah, just, he's, 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 he's he's a smile. Today. He does, yeah, yeah, a bit of versatility there. And look, yeah. they, they've every right now to just keep keep going with him. Like, he's, I've actually had a look. I think he's had every run, he's had a run in every month going back to, I think, September. And Has especially at this sort, yeah, he's been in the money. I think he fell every at time. the first, he fell at the first once at, um, I was like Killarney or something, but other than that, he's been unbelievably consistent and and has won twice and has bumped into an Eddie Colley horse, has bumped into uh, Bushman's Gate or what I think the the uh, McKiernan horse. Like he's bumped into some very well handicapped horses. He's got unlucky a few times. Like he could have ran up a sequence by now, uh, but that's uh, great to see horses like that. And it's a great training testament to keep a horse that sweet for that long at any level. Um, in handicaps, it's not an easy thing to do. Um. But we will move on, obviously, um, and we'll, we'll get straight into the action now, deck for the half one. Uh, the Connolly's Red Mills Irish EBF auction maiden hurdle. So Red Mills continuing uh, their sponsorship of weekend races in Ireland, as they usually do. Uh, they have obviously a uh, good sponsorship at Gowan last week, continuing it here to Ferry House this week, which is brilliant. Uh, one of the very first horses that made it to the top tracker deck, Michaela's Choice, is in here. Uh, first run in 119 days. He's only rated 97, so I'd imagine this is a prep run before going into a handicap. Uh, but then again, maidens at this time of year, at this level, is it's an auction hurdle. Um, 97 can get you semi-competitive. Uh, there is a horse in here rated 109, Bally Callan King. You could argue he's going to set the standard here uh, with me lucky Colleen, possibly. But, uh, what way do you see this going, Dick? Uh, look, I, I, was, I, I did fancy... Valley Callan King for the handicap at Nason. It was a lot of money for him the first day, the, the day the card was called off. And I don't yeah. think I do, don't think he was off the, the for the rescheduled card. Um uh, I was I, I was a bit disappointed with him at, in Limerick last month. And uh, I, I don't think I'd fancy him uh, on Saturday either. Look, I've mentioned me lucky Colleen on here a few times and she's she's inconsistent but i think she's loads of ability she was 10 lengths off only by night and nice she's mm. capable of putting in a big one i'd say you, you should get a decent price on her and i take the gamble that she will put in one of her better runs if she does i could see her taking a, a maiden of this standard of this standard yeah that's a, you probably t- took the uh, words out of my mouth there deck and um, her second two only by night like that you would go a long way to find a weaker maiden for the time of year. Um, like the form has taken beatings left, right, and center, really. But when you look further through it, you see the flying bee who was beaten even further um yeah. by only by night, albeit in a bumper. This is her hurdling debut. She's probably the joker in the pack. Um, you know, if she improves for hurdle, um, like she wouldn't need to be a star to win this. But again, even on her bumper form, she probably would need to improve. Uh, Arch Hall, who's had one run uh, over hurdles here against Tallstone as well. Um, look, I, that was a fine run uh, over two miles, as I said, and she already looks like she needs a step up and trip. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whatever she or whatever he can do here. Sorry, it's a four-year-old gelding. Um, whatever he can do here, um, it'd be quite interesting to, to see if he um, if he can improve on it. But he, he already looks like a horse that will improve for two and a half miles as we come into the spring months. Uh, yeah, me lucky Colleen, you're probably right, Deck does set set the standard here. And is it a race to be having a bet in? Absolutely not. It's a race I'm gonna be watching Michaela's choice like a hawk in. Uh won't be pulling the trigger, but uh he'll be winning a handicap in the early springtime, I would have thought. Um and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. Uh we move on to the two oh three then the Ferry House Easter Festival, March thirtieth to April first handicap hurdle. Um again, not the uh biggest highest of grade here 118 being the uh top weight tall stone but it is a competitive race um small field 
a small field, yeah, which is a bit strange. Um, you very rarely see a small field a handicap in, in this country. Uh, but this is one. And it's probably because it is for the four-year-olds. Um, that would mm. be really the only reason. Like a lot of the, a lot of the four-year-olds obviously haven't had many opportunities to have so many runs. But uh, we have a few here that have had their three runs and, and in some cases more. This is an absolute minefield, even though there's only six runners deck. But who do you like? I was at Limerick the last day when in the trenches made his handicap debut mm. against all our horses and I was quite impressed with him and I'm not even sure he was off that day um, and <laughs> it, it was a big big race and yeah. Viv and I catch her, he was staying on Um it was over two miles this over two miles also and um, the winner was second over fences today second to dancing Jeremy the, the one that um set a scorching gallop uh, the, the John Ryan horse, I can't quite think of the name. Oh, let me find out for you now. And today, and a um, Mount Frisco is it? Mount Frisco, yeah. Mm. Look, I, I was I was a little bit taken by that performance by in the trenches at, at Limerick, and like a, I had a look at him. Um, I was tempted to back him. I didn't. I didn't think he would be off. And as I said, I'm, I'm not sure he was, but uh, he, he ran on quite well to, to take second. So. I'd fancy him to run a big, big race here back against his own age. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, the one actually I was kind of interested in, and again, it, it, would this be a race to be having a bet in? It probably wouldn't be. Uh, but in the trenches does look the likely favourite. But the one down the very bottom there, Noble Hilltop, who is uh, Danny Gilligan's going to take three, uh, five pounds off. John McConnell trains. I've been trying to keep an eye on John McConnell horses that started their hurdling career um, around October, November time. Uh, like this horse, he had a run at Sedgefield, then Ferry House, and then Newbury. Um, and it's our, sorry, it's Philly. So she's had her three runs, but the yard was woefully out of form at the start of the National Hunt season. Um, she's had it then a two month break and has came back in a maiden hurdle behind Tallstone. Um, Rob uh, is who was second, is obviously higher in the weights uh, today. Um, so she will reoppose him. But I, I would just be very interested to see how she goes on handicap debut. Obviously, Rob Aretti, 116 at Noble Hilltop with Danny Gilligan's £5 claim as well to boot, only rated 97. So there's a big, big swing. Um, you couldn't compare the two, even though they've met each other already. Um, we've got short head, it's just 16 to just have a quick look. Like We're talking a big, big swing in the weights anyway, 24 lengths, and you're, you're probably getting that. Like they're going to be very close to each other, I would have thought. Um, she's had her for, uh, comeback run, and it'd be her handicap debut. I, I'd be very interested now. She was a double figure price. I could be tempted into it, but you just don't know with these four year olds. They can all improve at different stages. But as I said, just keep an eye on those John McConnell horses that either started hurdling or chasing at the time when the yard was very, very quiet because it could prove quite lucrative coming into the summer. Um, so yeah, she'd be the one that'd be quite close to look at. And then it's in the trenches for yourself, Deck, is it? It'd be in the trenches, yeah. Very good. On to the 240, the Tommy Carberry handicap hurdle. Um, one of your old favourites back here, Deck, from over a year off, done vegan, heading to weights, uh, off 138, Mikey O'Sullivan riding. Um, likely favourite is probably going to be Sh uh, Sl Slan Aguave Galer, or see you all later, basically, um, who won a maiden hurdle last time out. Um the one I really like is right down the bottom there, talking to Park on stable debut for Ross O'Sullivan. But uh, which one do you like there? Um, I thought this race is very, very interesting. Like you have a couple of mm. couple, couple coming back from fences. Obviously, done vegan, an eleven year old now. Um, he rated one hundred and fifty eight over fences. He peaked at one sixty. Um, he he like he, he ran some eye catching races on the flat as well. He was touring in November handicap in twenty twenty one. He ran in a Barrick Bingham, or God knows what it was called back then. It could have been. <laughs> could have been a lap jail, probably. Now. Yeah, when, when he ran in it. Um, I'm trying to think who won his. Was it Samco? Ooh, could have been. I'll have a look for you now. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll find out while you're talking. Look, he, he was a maiden hurdle winner. He's obviously he ran in a novice grade one. I don't know whether he ran at Leopardstown before going to Cheltenham, but he is 11. You know, I know he's, he's potentially twenty pound well in, but his horse had a lot of problems. I think he he was a bleeder as well. They they managed to sort it out. He's been 
he's been a great horse to follow. Um, I love him. He's, he might have been, did he win a, a Dan Moore or was he second? He won in a it? Dan Moore. I, or was he, uh, I think he won a Dan Moore. I'll double check. Right, he, now, might, but... he might have beaten Blow, not Blow by Blow, uh, Black Bow. He beat he Grange beat Walk. Uh, oh, sorry, Grange Walk. That was a fairy house. That was another two mile handicap chase. That's, um, yeah, he beat Black Bow and he beat yeah. Grange Walk before that. So, yeah. He, uh, look, he, he was knocking on the door of being a grade one horse. I'd say if he didn't have his injury problems, he, he definitely would have been. And if he hadn't, a, he wasn't a bourser, um, he definitely would have been a grade one horse. But I, I'll take mm. him on here. There's, there's got to be something, you know, um, unexposed and on the up. Talking to Park, as you mentioned, um, really, really fancied him the last day at Navin, went from the front. Look, was was fought but bumped into Harvard guy. He was 30 lengths off Harvard guy. Got a bit tired. I think Danny rode the last day. Um he's obviously been sold. He's with Ross now. And mm. Mm, I, I, I'm not so sure. Uh Slana Gov Galer. Uh disappointing at Navin, but one at Punches Town, just short headed the horse that you put up, the Churchstone Warrior. Yeah, Churchstone yeah, lad, I think was it? Yeah, something uh, like that. This, this is a handicap debut. This is a handicap debut. 123. Not sure. Um, I do think High they enough. did a bit from though. I think they mm. backed him. They backed him at Navin when he was disappointing. Um, but it's like it's not like he came in one convincingly at Punches Town there, and so on. I'm just not so sure. What could have been is one for me over hurdles. She was second Astro Diamond in the Grade One at Fairy House. It's a handicap mm. debut. But the one I've come down on is Carrick Sam, in here off 125. Uh, he's had three hurdle starts. He was a maiden winner before winning a handicap of um, 126 in April 22. He hasn't really taken the chasing. And when he was last seen over hurdles, it was after winning that, that handicap hurdle. He ran, he was sixth off 134. The mm. rating, I assume, comes from how bad he's been over fences because they would have had to really be, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, was you know this is this is a brilliant bit of placing. I think um, I'd be keen enough on him. The fact he's he's already won off higher, he just hasn't taken the chasing. If the confidence is there, like if it hasn't been knocked too hard, I think he's going to take some stopping. Yeah, uh, it's an interesting on stable debut now as well for Peter Croke, uh, who's inherited him from Gavin Cromwell. Uh, but yeah, no, very interesting. Uh, first run in 166 days as well. You wouldn't be worried he might need it or anything like that. You think he could just go and, like he has one fresh in the past, so I suppose there's no real, no real issue there. Yeah, just the fact I think he's really well handicapped. Like mm. two hurdle starts ago, he won a handicap off a of pound higher. Right. You know, if if you, that's one way of looking. If you want to just discard all the those chase runs, is I don't think he was a chaser at all. Mm, mm. Like it, it's yeah. like a postcode of the farm, I think F's and PU's. And yeah, there's all sorts. Yeah, you end up with someone's yeah. gaff. You put that into your that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you'd end up somewhere in England. Yeah, PO box number. Um, <laughs> but yeah, look, he's he's you know three hurdle starts. He's <laughs> already down below his last winning mark. Yeah, no, it, it's it is very interesting for sure. Um, I just thought maybe talking to park might have been a little bit below form when well beaten by harvard guy they did go hard enough that day and um he will have to reverse the form with kilbury warrior who herself wears a heart in her sleeve goes off a crazy gallops Um he also might be a better horse that that enjoys passing passing horses out like his best performances have came from when he was in midfield or towards the back that's uh, because he running. wasn't off yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when he was he, he was kind of uh held up a little bit off the pace when he was only beaten nine lengths by harvard guy at navin in december um they tried to run him prominently then and i'm not like i just didn't seem to suit the horse he, he he ran below par for whatever reason but if ross has been able to get him freshened up off 10 stone one on his best maiden form and even going back to that race like oh basically all i'm saying is if you forgive his last run um he, you're gonna probably get compensated with a nice price at 10 stone one it's, he's gonna think it's his birthday darrow o'keefe um interesting enough booking as well i'd say connections we sweet enough and their chances there um I, so I, I would i thought he looked the winner turning in the last day obviously mm. i backed him and I, uh, I was watching him i was counting me my winnings yeah i was maybe I'm, I'm, i might be just a little bit sore after it 
still. Yeah, you see, he was he was incredibly well backed, but he was beaten so far that I, I just it makes me think that there might have been even just something slightly amiss. Um, because as you said, he did travel in well, but he came from further off at Harvard Guy. So, like, Kilbury Warrior busted that race open, and she's probably going to bust this race open as well. But I, I just think giving him another chance, like, you're going to get a big, you could get it. I don't know if you get a double figure price, um, but I think you'll get a nice enough price, and that would do me. Uh, obviously, I said there, Slan Aguiv, Slan Aguiv Galer, um, you mentioned there, Deck. We I think we popped up as you said the runner-up Church Church Road Prince. Um, that was over three miles. I think one, two, three is very harsh. Um, and he's coming back and trip. There's enough for me to take him on there. Mm. Uh, a few, you know, good veterans of the game. Boz de Clamond. Um, he'll probably, you know, on on his best form he would have a, a squeak but you'd have to go back far enough like he, he has more than enough ability to win off 126 um but it's just whether he'd be able to to do that or not he has been a little bit below par this season yeah but for me it, it's talking to park I, i'd definitely take a chance off 113 he will win off it eventually maybe he needs better ground i don't know but I, i'm just basically going and forgiving that run last time out uh the nine lengths to harvard guy is is for me a strong form um We'll move on then, deck to the 315. It's the Ferry House Bumper Bundle for Easter Handicap Hurdle. It's an 80 to 102. We're in your sphere now. <laughs> um, however, even though it's an 80 to 102, the top weight is 99, the Liz Doyle trained Yabo, who has been woefully out of form since winning um, last season. I think it was November of last season, beating Willy Wampus. It uh, was a uh, chase. So... Look, there's one horse deck that we probably have to we have to visit here. There's no point of even sugarcoating it. Like Jouster is going to win if he stays up, isn't he? Even though he's probably gotten a hike, he's gotten a few pounds, three pounds. He got two pounds. Two uh, pounds. Look, Jouster wins this. He's gone up two pounds. The value's gone. He could be even money favorite. I just yeah. think we we live at that. We move on. Yeah, he's, no, he, I, he, he's he jumped so well the last day. Keith nearly, mm. you know. Keith had to keep taking the pull, um, <laughs> bringing him back, and he just travelled so well into it. Um, it looked like he was going to win very, very easy, and it was such a soft fall. I we got, I think we got twelves, did we? That day, oh, you got you got twenties. I thought you got bigger than that. I got, Maybe I think I did, got twenty one. Yeah. I can't, can't quite, I'm trying, <laughs> to, trying money. to forget about it. Um, <laughs> The, like that came just before the Dublin Racing Festival as well. Like mm. that was that was a tough few weeks. Um, uh, look, this is toward handicap. That was the first time in his life he was off, and he looked like he was loving it, and he was going to win well. The two pounds not going to stop him, but he's going no. to be like what he'd be six to four or something. No, he'd be. But the thing is, he could drift. Uh, people see a short price in the handicap and the F beside his name, um, and the reason I think he might drift um, is because of if, if you just going back to trying to get the name of that horse that won at. On Saturday for Gavin Cromwell, the Grade Two winner, um, the Albert Bartlett trial. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What's his name? I've completely gone blank. Let them pass or something was it? Or no, it, that late night pass was in. Now is the hour. Is the horse? Oh, now is the hour. Yeah, yeah. So he was subject to an unholy gamble at Christmas time at Limerick. Um, so apologies there for any <laughs> missed uh, technical issues. Uh, yeah, we're talking about now is the hour who was subject to an unholy gamble at Limerick. Um, I think he was backed into nine to four from crazy double figure prices. And again, very similar to Jouster, fell at the second last with the race at his mercy. He opened up about even money for another maiden hurdle and drifted quite markedly and st still won. I think it was actually at Ferry House and then he won a grade two um, at Haydock last week. Now, I'm not saying that Jouster's a grade two horse, um, but if you take the logic that trainers are a creature of habit and jouster and now is the hour having very similar profiles before um their respective upward trends or well now are the hours uh now is the hours case an upward trend this horse probably going to go on a similar one isn't he and he is he's just going to win <laughs> so yeah nap of the tap if he's not even money i suppose that because that, that's the case is it yeah yeah look it's well I'd, I'd like to be finding something juicier than that but Mm. it's been a tough week as well so we'll that's true take it. we'll have to go yeah we'll have to take what we can get 
Uh, moving on to the Bobby Joe Chase Grade Three, three miles. Um, as you said, deck a national trial that is not a handicap. Uh, only the four runners. I am Maximus, the Drinmore winner, uh, and the Irish national winner from last year. Fury Road in new colours, obviously. Um, this season, Manella Crooner, who came from way off the pace to nearly actually win a Tremor on New Year's Day. And then, obviously, the uh, runner up in the Bobby Joe Chase and Aintree National last year, Vanillier. Uh, all eyes on him as he's probably the anti post favourite now for the Aintree National. But who do you like out of this court out there? Um, look, Fury Road clearly didn't take to cross country. He was very, yeah, he very slow over the obstacles. Mm. Yeah, absolutely despised it. Uh, look, I, I, I think I don't, I don't think they ever campaigned that horse right. Did he run in a Ryanair? Could have been a Gold Cup horse. Mm. Ran him in a Ryanair, like they chicken seven do with so many of theirs. You know that are crying out for for the maximum trip. Um, Vanillier, well handicap, but I don't think he's going to be good enough to win this. Uh, look, it's between I am Maximus and Manella Crooner. Uh, Manella Crooner is having a decent season, but look, I am Maximus, was t- you know, 17 lengths fourth in the Irish Gold Cup, won the Drinmar, has won the Irish Grand National back at Fairy House. Mm. I think he's going to be difficult to be, you know. Um, he looks like he's becoming more straightforward the older he gets. Um, now yeah. he could be that, that doesn't mean he's anyway saying because he was very mad. So, yeah, he I, I just think he's gonna be very, very hard to be here. Yeah, he probably is, even though he has to spot 12 pounds to Vanillier, uh, which is not no easy task whatsoever. But and, and Vanillier obviously excelling in this race last year. But look, I am Maximus does have the grade one form, uh, a novice grade one winner at the start of the season, and as you mentioned there, uh, two decent enough runs in the in the circumstances given who he was against uh, at Leopardstown after that uh, he does set a very nice standard even 158 like for what he's achieved hmm. um like you could make the argument him being north of 160 he, um, he, like on his form he's entitled you, you, if, you, if you ignored his rating and you just said look at his form you'd say he's entitled to turn up in a gold cup and hmm. you think you have to be 160 plus to run in a gold cup yeah and the funny thing is he's 25 to 1 for the Aintree national he's already won an irish national which we already know like going to an irish national and then going to an english national the year after especially if you've won an irish national it's usually a recipe for success like we've seen plenty of horses do it um number six will the one coming to mind and the headhunter running an irish national i know bobby joe who the race is named after bobby um, joe won and papillon papillon was second to him yeah so like it, it can be it's a good trial. Like he, I am Maxis. I've nearly talked myself into an entry national bet now. What? Let's have to see what weight he's after getting. Uh, um, it's it's actually becoming a better race with no gimmicks. Yeah, that's a much better race now. Yeah, oh God, yeah. especially thirty four well, runners it's, now it's as well. It's actually becoming a better race than than entry because it's 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 mm. not gimmicky. Like I know I know Andrew's getting better and better as well. But um, yeah, the Irish nationals. Yeah, you've you've grade one horses turning up in it now. Yeah, I'm looking now. Like you've got Manella Indo off one fifty nine, Janadil one fifty nine, I am Maximus one fifty nine. Like you have to remember, those are all. There's two decent horses there in Janadil, Manella Indo, and Asterium for Lange one fifty eight. I am Maximus only an eight year old, and he's mm. been placed in grade ones and has won a Drinmore and has won an Irish National. He's twenty five to one at the minute for the Aintree National. And you know what? I'm going to spice up this podcast a little bit, Deck. Um, I am going to tip I am Maximus anti post for yeah. I, come here, I, I, I fancy him as well. Uh, mm. I can't wait to see what defenses do to him. I, yeah. I, I'm excited to see what way defenses make him tick. And uh, this far out, he's my, my idea of the winner as well. Yeah, we had, what, a, what we call is an anti post snap of the top. Anti post snap of the top. <laughs> Does that get yeah? Okay, for, why not for the grand national? Look, it's down. The, the weights haven't been compressed this year. It's down to 34 runners. I, I think he's a, a genuine grade one horse or a horse good enough to run in grade ones. Well, handicapped coming into it. Well, li- listen, who was it? Royal Pagoy won the bet fair chase, didn't he? How would, uh, I, how would, yeah. how would I and Maximus have run in that? He might have won it. He might have won it. So, like, well, yeah, like it. That's you know, like it's um, 
yeah, I think twenty five to one, and he's probably bigger elsewhere. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, outside of twenty five to one, it's probably the most accessible price. But there we go. I am Maximus for the Aintree National twenty five to one. Thank you very much. We'll move on deck to the four twenty five to book your advanced tickets rated novice chase. Um, I'd say a few anti post Cheltenham players might have their hearts in their mouth with this one, um, because heading the weights is a tony martin trained horse that i think was as short as about six to one for the kim Muir when i saw um latest books like crazy price it's good time johnny heading away to tear off 133 look he's either they're either trying to get a pound or two off his back for the kim Muir, or they're trying to win to get into the irish national uh, there's no it's one or the other what do you think it is deck or Don't think is there anything else you fancy here don't think good time Johnny jumps fences well enough. To no, win. I wouldn't either. But I, I, that's you never know what the connection is now. So, I ah uh, is, is we said this before on here. Like his chase starts up until this season were well spread out. Yeah, and I don't think he's jumped particularly well this season either. Don't think he jumps well enough. But what do you do with him? You have to try something. Like mm. he's he's handicapped to the hilt of a hurdle, so. You, you do have to try something and I think people are just latching on to connections the fact he won at Cheltenham last year I yeah. think they're ignoring his jumping I, 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 look to be honest I think I Barden's town lad he I couldn't jump a shadow either. there's a certainty I, probably in here is there intense raffles is a good he thing. looks like and he's past the post probably isn't he like yeah like, like, has to be this on. Be, yeah look this would be not but a top material for me because like if they let me have a look at tissues actually <laughs> yeah they've given them they've given them 127 and the runner-up has won the irish national trial of punches town last week from that race uh, that he that he won easily he beat where it all began a ferry house easily um and 127 like that mark came from the sky um yeah. or the, the rating that he ran off before that came from the sky and uh, you have to remember he, he beat a rogo about four a years ago so he must be an absolute machine because he's already <laughs> won the turners <laughs> off an injury yeah anyway uh look what what price the tissues like he has to be he's odds, favorite on the is he is he odds on he's seven to four oh, he'll be odds on he, he'll have to be odds on sure as you said good time johnny not the greatest of jumpers Bardenstown lad honestly probably is fencephobia and then brampton bell the mayor <sighs> look there what's there yeah you know, behind natural look she hasn't run since november uh behind she'd, Oscar claremont she'd get more weight off him in a in, in a conditions, conditions race. race yeah 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 um first time pieces good, for her there's probably a good travel there isn't there like it's probably straightforward juice that royal maximus and yeah. This is easy. <laughs> uh, he's only a six-year-old as well in tennis. We're getting there, desperate could be now, amount, there could be yeah, we're terrible, aren't we? Uh, there could be some amount of improvement in in, uh, in intense raffles. But anyway, moving on to the five o'clock deck, the Ian Smith Memorial bumper over two. Sorry, and just just before we move on, okay. How good could he be? He did beat a robo. I know it was as I know it was in a three-year-old hurdle or something in France. Just straight out of the womb, not as early. Yeah, could have been a two-year-old hurdle over there. But he mm. did beat him, yeah. And he was—he's probably just really well handicapped here, because he—I know—he ran off his rate in the last day, yeah. Which was it was one twenty three or something, was he? he only got four pounds. Did they give him? They give him a challenge injury. Have a quick look at that. I don't think they did, but I will have a look because they could get like he'd have to the only entry the only race he'd run in unless he beat these half the track no they didn't um he's actually entered sunday as well in the in a listed novice chase or a listed handicap chase at uh nace um just have a quick look at they surely won't pass this up though this is this is a penalty kick this is a penalty kick and he's gonna win yeah. two handicaps after this yeah oh there's hands of gold anyway yeah that's that's the 220 at nace that we're talking about anyway um yeah, look, I I don't see why they pass this up. It's what it's nine grand to the winner, so it is a, a vastly more richer race at, at Nace. But if they've declared here, I imagine they're going to run here. He ran off one hundred and seventeen. I I know, like he, I think they were all. It was basically a handicap the last day. This is basically a handicap as well. 
Yeah, it says he ran off 170 in the last day. Mm. Oroko's going to win the tournament, apparently. And this horse came over here with a mark of 170 and he's on multiplied it by two. Here. <laughs> he's gonna win this, he's gonna win two handicaps. You would have thought. Does yeah. he it does he win this when oh has could he get into an Irish national? No, well, unless he you know, like he'd want to win this by a fence, probably. But... <laughs> win this turn up Sunday, win again. <laughs> <laughs> they lobbing on, they be, they be shoveling white onto his back. <laughs> uh, you end up at right, right about 150. Um, no, you never know. Like, I doubt it, but like, it, it would be cool to see him back up twice, but I highly doubt it. Um, what would get you into an Irish national? Let me. Oh, you'd want to be, I'd say you want to be in the 140s. Yeah. Easily. 142. He's got £10 for the last day. He wins this well. It's, um... it's much harder, though, to get. 10 12 13 14 pounds in four runner races like if you if you go bolt up in a handicap with 10 runners you don't even need like you go in five lengths you can get 10 pounds you know like it, if you go into a four runner race and win ease down it's much easier to say your opponent's underperformed 134 got you in last year really Jenny, yeah. like, i don't know are we doing a before. are we doing an anti-post national double <laughs> this thing will have to win first um, <laughs> and you need to get a price but we'll see very good yeah a lot of national clues but yeah good old intense raffles plenty plenty to talk about um and yeah look 127 you could make an argument we would probably the best handicapped horse in the country especially after what we saw from uh nowhere or when on on sunday at punches um right deck five runners for the ian smith memorial and um we have no representative of Willie Mullins. That is a rarity, um, usually in these bumpers. We've uh, anyway, we have the five Sporting Glory with two seconds to his name, uh, Derek O'Connor riding, and um, we also have a point to point runner up in Jersey, the Bross, uh, Gordon Elliott, first time up for him, and Jigginstown, Harry Swan riding. Um, look, am I wasting my time asking you what you fancy here or what do, what do you like? Um, I probably sp fancy Sporting Glory. On the second to Romeo Culio and the mayor of Stuart Crawford's that ran in the Leopardstown mayor's bumper. Uh, yeah. It's, it's probably decent form. Apparently, Romeo Culio is an absolute machine. This, this podcast could be easy. You just back things that ran against machines. The 10th <laughs> raffle ran against a Rocco, who's passed the pokes in the turners, and Romeo Culio has already won a gold cup, I think. <laughs> He's already got, yeah, he's already in the, the hot to Cheltenham Hall of Fame. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, yeah, very easy. Yeah, no, I think uh, that's probably the best form on offer. But yeah, again, if you're if you're looking to have a punt in the in the bumper, it's, it's obviously been a bad top 33. Uh, Twitter tips or X tips or whatever will be back on Sunday for Nace. I've already given a quick mention to a horse that I actually earmarked for this race. This, this, um, this Nace card, I think, has been pushed back to the end of the month. Uh, I don't think this this chase that I, I was referencing there with um, with Hands of Gold and Intense Raffles, the 220 that is on Sunday, I, d I thought that was at the start of the month or even at the end of January. Yeah, um, it definitely wasn't. It definitely wasn't yeah. this day because the Leinster National is soon. Leinster National the tends to be the one. Sunday before yeah, it's Cheltenham. usually the, it's going to be the Sunday after now, is it? Oh, because is it? Cheltenham's a week. It's going to, Cheltenham's, I think Leopard Sound's a week before this year or the weekend before this year. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but let, let me have a um, quick over, have a quick gander, yeah. But um, I I would want to see Hands of Gold have, have jumped a lot better behind Intense Raffles the last day, but I wouldn't I wouldn't ignore him if he was rocking up here off 118. I wouldn't be able to. But anyway, we will pop um tips from Twitter up. Nice yep, is yep, on. Maybe. Nice is the tent. That's Lens on National Day. All right. And Limerick's actually the tent. Okay. That was normally the week after. The week after. Uh, yeah. When's Leopards down then? The Tour and Fort. Okay. That's where yeah, I actually that, that, initially. That's the same as, as normal. That's Yeah. Leopards Sound have a as it always yeah. is. Leopards Sound have a two mile five handicap chase worth a similar amount of money to this nice race, but they're both over this trip for the exact same horse. I, I find it weird that they've pushed this nice race so close to that. Um, it is the forty-five kind of, grand. Yeah, that, that's it's the exact same. There's a race at Leopard Sound, almost the exact same as this, just a furlong further. Um, I find that a bit bit weird now. So you're 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 
pandering to the same pool of horses. But anyway, um, that's, that's not my job. I just try and find the winners. So uh, that brings us to an end, the Tap 33 deck. So we just to recap, we have both tipped I am Maximus for Aintree. Yeah. We both think Intense Raffles is past the post. Yeah. And Jouster is also past the post. So, Jesus, we've turned into mugs overnight here. On, on yeah. table, but I don't think there's very many horses here that we've, we've tipped at big prices, which is very unlike us. But um, we can only do what the cards tell us, and we can only tip what we like. But um, I do think the Russell Sullivan horse that I mentioned there in the um, in the Tommy Carberry handicap hurdle, which is at 240, the bottom way. Uh, I know Deck absolutely hates this horse now, but talking to Park, I'm going to give him another chance. He's going to be, a, I'd say, a, a fair price now uh, in the 240, and I will pop him up. Um, and maybe even the John McConnell filly, if she's a double figure price in that four year old handicap hurdle, I, I think she's worth taking a keep, uh, keen eye on. Um, but other than that, Deck, uh, any closing any closing words for yourself, or are you happy enough? No, I just well well done to the connections of Marsh Ren. Great to see, yeah. and um, no, um, no, that's it. Ho- hopefully, we, we get back in the winners and closure ourselves. Ah, uh, we'll be back. It's on. Oh, uh, we'll be back. Don't worry. Do, do you know what uh, I, I will say? Like, the, and we've said this before. When ground is very very heavy, it gets difficult, and um, it has been. It's it's like as I said, punches down and, and fair play to him thinking outside the box, like everything on 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 the inside. Um, it, that shows how how bad the ground has been. That they yeah. need to save some. So uh, go easy. If if, if we've any more rain, anyone having a bet, go easy. Just just do that, treble. <laughs> Go <laughs> easy, except for these ones. Um, <laughs> no, that was brilliant. That was Tap 33. Just keep liking on Twitter, slash X, slash Spotify, slash YouTube, slash wherever you can find us. Uh, keep sharing, keep subscribing, keep commenting as well. We love the interaction with you guys as well. It's very much appreciated. Yeah, but until then, we'll be back. Uh, Tap 34 deck, I think, is going to be our Cheltenham Weights special, which I'm currently working on. Waiting for the weights. And we are, if you're happy to, go through as many Irish horses as possible for the Cheltenham handicaps once we have to wait out we'll see is this where we we just gone to abuse the British handicapper uh there'll be a bit of abuse in there of course why not but like um we're gonna find a few winners and we'll find a few nice big prices and that we both have our keen eyes on very much looking forward to that but until then guys that was top 33 bye bye cheers